All right. Today is October 16th, 2012. We are currently in the parlor at Mackin House. I am interviewing Marlon Swatson and Maurice Lacoste. How are you two? Good. Yeah, that's well. All right. All right. So let's start off with uh, where did you guys grow up and how did you end up at Coquitlam? We were uh, born in Born in Coquitlam? Yeah. Uh, what parts of Coquitlam were you born in? When I was born, we were living on Austin. In Austin? And then we moved to Marmont, and uh -huh. that's where we... Oh, okay. Okay, my, my father and mother both came from Quebec in 1910. 1910? And they settled at Fraser Mills. Mm -hmm. And they actually, well, no, they didn't do it right away, but they got together somehow, and then they got married. And, there, and uh, then Dad rented a house at Fraser Mills when I was about four months old. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started with the whole situation. I lived there until... Let's see, 1951 or two or something. Oh, okay. And uh, you lived in? Marmont and Austin. Marmont and Austin. Yeah. And how come uh, your parents decided to move to Marmont, do you know? Uh, well, my grandfather had greenhouses on Rochester. Okay. And my dad was working for him at the time. So we moved to Coquitlam. Oh, okay. My dad was born in Coquitlam also. So. Has there been any major changes in Coquitlam? And oh, yes, yeah. quite, a bit. Can quite you, a bit. Can you describe some of them? Yeah. Well, Austin, there was well, maybe one store, and uh, that's about it. That's about and, it. And uh, there was a little church. That's, there just wasn't anything out oh, there. OK. Because our, our, our mail came to our one new Westminster. Oh, so, okay. No mail delivery or nothing. Oh, okay. And uh, you lived in Fraser Mills? I lived in Fraser Mills. And in 19, I can't remember what year, maybe 48 or something. What, not, whenever the Lougheed Highway came through. Oh, okay. In Fraser Mills, our house, the house, Dad's house was in the way of the Lougheed Highway. So he got a chance to buy it. And he got bought it and moved it up to Marmo, or Blue Mountain and Alderson. And, and that's where it was for a long time. I went to work at a plywood plant. I worked there for 12 years at Fraser Mills. And then I moved to Prince George. I lived there for four years. And in 1960, I moved to California, Southern California. And I lived there 15 years. And I came back home in 1975 here. Oh. And that's the way, that's where I'm gonna stay now. So. Oh. How come uh, you decided to come back to Kugulam after so long? Well, when, why did I come back? To, you asked me why, what made me come back here? Yeah, exactly. Because things got a little bit tough for a while. I was in construction, mm. and it got a little bit tough for a while. And then, you know, it, after, you know, after 10, 12, 15 years, even, it got rough. So we decided we were going to come back here, here, both my first wife, not Marilyn. So I came up first and she stayed there. And in the meantime, it didn't work out with us. And she was there, she stayed there, and then we got divorced. Oh, I see. And then after, after a few years, I met Marilyn. And th then we got married. We were together for 25 years, and then we finally got married. So oh. we've been married how many years now? 35, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Married, <laughs> yeah. not married. Oh, wow. no. Anyway, that's what that's, and we lived here in the house that Marilyn grew up in, up here on Marmont and, and Austin, just this, the south side. And uh, we, the mother and dad moved to Port Coquitlam, mm. and we bought the house from them. And how long were we there? Quite a while. Yeah, 86. Anyway, we moved to Maple Ridge seven years ago, and oh. that's where we are now. The house is still up there. <laughs> the house is still up there? Yeah, it's oh, still okay. there. Yeah. All right. Um, do you remember any fads and like uh, any popular kind of themes that you guys grew up with in Coquitlam or? Oh, I can't. Were they? Yeah, those skirts, big skirts, and uh, well, we did square dancing at school and then the, the sports. Basketball and that, okay. and uh, we had 
went home. There was there was a few things, but nothing like they have now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I grew up like in Fraser Mills, mm -hmm. and in those days there wasn't nothing else. There was houses that that up here, but there was 135 homes down there at one time. There weren't that many when I was there actually, but nevertheless, we used to play. You may get off of the road and, and there's, there's a few, there's houses, but beyond that it was all bush. So that's where us kids spent most of our time is playing. There's a lot of things we used to do, play in there, make little log houses and different things. Also, when we got a little bit older, not old, old, but we'd go down to the mill. There was a, there's a stream that goes down there and where it comes into the river, we used to call that Popeye's Dam. And we used to go down there and jump, swim in there. We'd swim, jump into the water, go to the boom, walk up the booms to Colony Farm, jump in the water and swim back down to, the, to that. Now that's not something I would want my kids to grow up in, <laughs> yeah. but in any case, that's what. We, there's a lot of things we did, but in those days you did things. Things what's going on today, you never had anything like that. Oh, okay. You know, like computers and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I can remember having a little radio, just in our house in Dad and Mom's house, just a little radio. Well, at one time there was electric streetcars that used to come down to Fraser Mills. And where our house was is right where they come out of the bush, so to speak. And they'd go down the mill and they'd pick up people off of their off work every after the shifts and all that. But uh, we used to walk from there up to Hume Park to go swimming. And in those days, you could go, you could take the bus for 12 cents to New Westminster, and 12 cents back. And you want to go to a show on a Saturday after Saturday morning. The matinee, I think it cost us 10 cents. Oh, 10 cents. Okay. So that's, you know, that kind of stuff we did when we were young. We never had uh, bus transportation. Uh, we had to walk from up there all the way into New Westminster if we wanted to. Oh. That was quite a hike. Yeah, and then uh, for grade one and two, I went to St. Anne's Academy, which was in New Westminster. We had to walk from Austin down to Marmont, and we were like six and seven years old. Oh, wow. And get the bus to go in there. When I went to school, it was at Our Lady of Lourdes mm -hmm. Church, and right today, it's in their parking lot, they had, we used to call it a convent, is that where the sisters, the <coughs> nuns, nuns lived there and taught there. And I and I went there, I I got through my eighth grade, and then I, I figured working, I was gonna give that to you. Oh, my God. I figured that, Money was nicer than education, so I didn't go back to school oh, okay. after that. But but that's where I went to school. Okay. Our Lady of Lourdes. Okay. At school, were there any uh, special school activities and sports that you guys participated? Yeah, there was um, basketball, volleyball, and track and field. Okay. Yeah, pretty well the same as what they have now. Oh, okay. Yeah. They didn't have too much of that in our school. We just we had a, a a pretty good playground in there. Like today, by the church, it's a parking lot. It's it's big, but there was two buildings in there that were weren't there that was there then, but they're not there now. So you'd have your recess and you'd go back to classes, and after class, well, we used to actually come home to Fraser Mills for lunch from school mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Then once in a while, mother and me would make a lunch for us. So, but but that and playing. Well, there was no sports or anything. And this is a Catholic school, and, and in those days, they weren't uh, they weren't built that way. Any, you know, no, that's the way it went. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. They used to have a May Day here in Coquitlam. A May Day. May Day. Oh. They have it in. They still have it in New Westminster. But they had May Day here, and, and different different schools would run, and they'd run for May Queen and all that. Then they have the big uh, May Day celebration at Blue Mountain Park. But oh. they don't have uh, anything like that anymore. Oh. But, but that was fun. Okay. I had forgotten that we the our school was was into that as well. Yeah, yours was. Yeah, yeah. Our, our school did. 
dancing around the maypole. Do you ever, do you ever remember that? Maypole? Or here, maypole. Where they had these ribbons and... Yeah, you hold on the ribbons and, and, and it, dance all around, boys and girls. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. I don't know how you would call it, but it makes a pattern with all these ribbons going around. Yeah, uh, spider pole. web and different things. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, did you guys go to university? Yeah. I never went. I only went to eighth grade. Okay. I, I graduated. When oh. we graduated from school in those years, well, they, we graduated with all, all the um, needs that we could just go and get a job. Because oh. I graduated as a secretary. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to go to college or anything for it because it was all there. You just graduate and then you get a job. Now you don't, you know, you have to go to university or college and, and all that. So I didn't need any further education when I graduated. Oh, okay. Uh, what kind of holiday, holidays did you guys celebrate? Christmas, birthday. Yeah, we all we still as a family we still get together for them. We had a a cabin at Boundary Bay, which we spent all our summers down there. That was that was nice swimming and you know everything like that. And then all the family would be together all the time, so it was very nice. We we're very family oriented. Family oriented. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Did you celebrate any holidays at all? Uh, We we did, but not not quite that way. No, we never had a cabin or anything. There wasn't that much. There wasn't too much money in those days. And, and uh, Marilyn, my wife Marilyn, she when they used to go down to Boundary Bay, that was a family affair, not just their particular family, yeah, but it was just our family, the whole family. So we never had anything like that. The families would get together. I don't know if you ever saw that anywhere in the books or not, but at the Fraser Mills they used to have a, a, a three, a three, uh, a wood, a, a truck with a box on it, and they said they used to get the wood from the Fraser Mills and deliver the wood in this box to the different people, even in Millardville and all over the place. Well, quite often on a Sunday. They would get together and cut a few families, whoever would fit in the truck with their kids, the back of the truck in the box. And they put benches in there. And we go down to, uh, well, the other side, the other side of Mission. What was the name of that? There was a, there was a lake there that we used to go to. And we used to, go, we used to go to other places. We used to go to White Rock and that. But the families would get together and in the back of this wood, st wood truck, box sit in there and you wouldn't get away with that today <laughs> okay. uh, what were your favorite songs and music that you guys listened to or oh, any I, radio I like stations? western music yeah oh, okay. yeah I used to so do I I'm uh, I'm part of a group now called the Jammers mm. I have been for about 15 years 14 years and there's about eight or nine of us, used to be nine of us, but now there's seven or eight of us. I play the guitar and we got a good, two guitar players and we got a fiddle player and somebody else plays uh, banjo. And we get together and we go play at rest homes. You don't get paid very much, but the pay you get out of that is, a, is what you see you're doing for those people in the rest homes. They're saying that they're quiet, just not, thinking of nothing, you know, anything. You start playing music and you can see what happens to them. Their fingers start to move or their feet start to run around and jump around and then they get up and dance, quite a few of them. So that takes a lot of, of my time. Yeah, but you played the guitar when you were younger too. I did too. Yeah. Well, we used to go down to White Rock and there's six, seven of us would go down there. And you. You could, right where the pier is on White Rock, the top end of the pier, they used to have a place there, I don't know, it must have been about 25 or something by 25, and they only had the wall this high, and then they had a canvas roof on it, and you could rent a little spot in there. It wasn't locked or anything. We used to carry our guitars with us and everything. Nobody, 
Nobody stole anything or anything. In those days, you didn't have to worry. Today, you gotta lock everything you got, so, yeah. It's a lot to think about. Yeah. Uh, what was a typical family dinner that you guys would usually have at home? A typical family dinner? Yeah. Usually a roast and vegetables and pie, dessert, yeah. My father had a, a large garden because we had seven children and uh, we always had all our vegetables from the garden. We had all, these, all kinds of vegetables to have for dinner three vegetables and a potatoes and meat and dessert. That was a normal meal for every day. Okay. Did a lot of families have gardens back in the day? Or? Quite a few did, yeah. Quite a few did? Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, Dad had one that stretched away our property and then the lane, well, the lane wasn't through yet, so oh. he took the lane and had a garden too. So, oh. And Mom and him did a lot of canning because they didn't have freezers then. So. Oh. 700 quarts of canning, that was, that was a lot, vegetables and fruit. You had seven children in your family, and mm -hmm. your dad yeah. was busy with the garden, busy, busy. Yeah, he worked also, but he had the garden too, so. Okay. You, how many siblings did you have? Seven. Seven? Five uh, sisters, and there were those five girls and two boys. Oh, okay. And did they all grow up in Coquitlam, or? They're all what? Did they all grow up in Coquitlam, or? Yeah. Yeah, Not and there's still, uh, my brother is here and uh, my other brother is in Australia. Uh, sisters in Polk or Quitlam, one's in Mission and uh, one's in Calgary. Calgary. And mm -hmm. one up at Horse Fly. Yeah. Our family, there was five of us children. And the youngest one died first, mm -hmm. cancer. The next one died of cancer. The next one died of cancer. So that leaves two of us children. Well, in the meantime, mother and dad passed away. So there's only the two of us left. My sister lives in Bellingham. She's been down the States for 50 years. She finally became an American. Oh. Makes no difference. They're only an hour away from here, so they come and visit us. We go down there and visit them for four or five days. And we do a lot of other things together. We, we had, Marilyn and I had uh, RVs. I, I come up here from the States, and I had a camper, a truck, and then uh, uh, we had that for quite a long time, and then decided the camper was a little bit too small, so I thought, I'll build one. Hmm. So I built one, and Marilyn's brother built the frame for it, which was one by one steel for the frame. You'd think it'd be heavier than wood, but it wasn't because you don't use as much frame as you do with wood. So I built that and we had that for quite a long time. And then it got to be when we'd go camping with other people, we used to go caravanning four or five RVs together, go all over the place. Well, then in the evening, what you do, you sit in a camper or a motor home or whatever and you play cards or talk or have a beer or whatever. He usually have barbecues and whatever. Well, we couldn't put them into our little, our camper. It was 11 foot camper, mind you. So we got a fifth wheel trailer. We had that for maybe two years. And Marilyn didn't like that. She figured it was gonna run over us one of these days. So then we got a motor home, a 24 foot motor home. We had that for six years anyway, seven years. Seven, eight years in. And then uh, finally, I, I got TIAs, which are little strokes, which last a second or two. So I couldn't drive. So I haven't been driving for two years. Oh, okay. So well, I wouldn't did, drive But no more RVs, because yeah, <laughs> no more RVs. Yeah. Oh, okay. we, go, we go down to, uh, uh, we used to go down to Reno once a year in a bus. Bus trip. Uh, a bus, bus trip. trip. Yeah. But it was a local, local people that belonged to our club and that, and they get it all together for the year. And we used to have 55 people in the bus. That included a driver, of course. But as time goes along, it's smaller and smaller. Men die off before their wives, and then 
you got less people because we're older people, of course. Right. So now, now they still go down, but they go down with about 33, 34 people. So that's one of the things that we do. We, we don't do, we haven't done that for a couple of years. But we do, we go quite a bit. We go on different trips and all that, so that's a lot of fun. And cruises. Okay. Yeah. Not, not very far, just Alaska. Not, Alaska. You know, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for for the houses that uh, that used to be built and that are being built now, are there like the major changes for houses, housing? Yeah. The ones that were built a long time ago and now, are there lots of changes to them, or are they relatively the same? Oh yeah. Well, especially up on um, Charlotte, where we lived on the corner, I think there's maybe two houses out of the whole block that are left. The rest are all duplexes. And they used to be all kids that we went to school with. It was at one time there was over 40 kids on that one street, and you know there was all houses. But there's I think about two ours and another one that are left of the the original houses. But the rest are all new duplexes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So it's quite <laughs> it's quite different when you go up there. Oh. Yeah. Compared to now, right? Yeah, oh. that's right. Yeah, and there's lots more stores. There was only the one store on the corner. Then there used to be a drugstore on the other corner. And a church. That was about it for a long time. Yeah, and now it's, there's quite a bit up there now on Austin. When did they start uh, making more and more houses up there? Oh. Was it gradual or was it just? Yeah, just every once in a while they'd put, take an old one down and put a new one in. And Last 12 or 14 years maybe. Something like that, yeah. They've really come along differently. When I was in California, I was in construction housing. And before you get stuck on a house, you have to put black paper and chicken wire on it so that for the stucco to hold. Well, I did that for seven years down there and then I went into the commercial part and that was working on high rises and restaurants and we used steel studs instead of wood studs. So, uh, you know, the houses down there were different than they are here too. Here, you didn't have too many houses with their built garage, built in garages. Down in California, when I went down in 1960, you could buy a home, a three bedroom home with a built in garage for $12,000, period. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore. And, and of course, people buy those houses, things get a little bit better, they, they get into, they got a smaller mortgage and their wages start to come up. So the first thing they want to do, they want to get a color television. The next thing comes a boat. Next thing comes RVs. So you know what it is today. It's really changing. It was like that here, I'm sure. They don't build that way here, but still. But and in all, the 60s, uh, we bought a house in Surrey, and I think we paid about 15000 mm -hmm. and it had also a basement suite in it. Now, oh, okay. you, you couldn't find anything for that. You know. oh. But it's a, yeah, it really In those days, up. yeah. Yeah. Things have a way of changing, you know. Today's life, you think, you look ahead 10 years and just say that we went to sleep for 10 years and woke up in 10 years. You would be lost, absolutely lost. Yeah. You could, the world is just, technology is coming up so fast. Mm -hmm. Things will be changing yourself. I mean, you're just young. Can you imagine what happens to you when you, I'm 84 years old. Can you imagine what it would be like when you're 84? <laughs> Hopefully there will be better stuff. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be a lot different. Yeah, yeah. probably. Oh, for sure. Well, you got computers, you got phones, you got, oh God, it's, it's so far advanced now already, but it's, yeah. it's just jumping and jumping. Oh. Yeah. Do you know, do you remember when cell phones were introduced? And when what? Cell phones. When phones were yeah. introduced. Cell phones. Oh, gee. When, when I grew up, we didn't even have a phone in the house. Oh, okay. And then, uh, I don't know. We've had a cell phone, um, what, I don't know, 15 years or something, not for not long. 
But they were here before that. Yeah. I, I but don't we don't we don't use it like most people do, you know, because they're all into picture taking and all that. Well, no, we're not that way. <laughs> we use it mainly for an emergency. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, that's. We followed it, some yeah. of the trends. We have a we have a, a, a what's supposed to be a, like a den in that house uh, where we are, in Maple Ridge. She has her own computer, and I have my own computer. And I, we've got all our bells and whistles with that. I'm into photography quite a bit. I'm into music. I'm into p p photography. I, you take pictures with your camera, you put them on a computer, and you can make pictures. I mean, you know, and she does other things with hers a lot more. She's, she was a secretary for 28 years at a school here in Sapperton in our Sir Richard McBride yeah. school. So. She is, she does a lot of things with uh, well address address labels and stuff like that for us for ourselves and and when we when I make I make greeting cards as well on a computer and when I make a greeting card I pick pictures out I got a card program and I get the pictures from that and I try and get pictures that are uh, photograph pictures not not drawn. And then you put them on your card, put them on the face of the card, you put another page inside, you put another picture there, put a picture in the back, and, you, and at the back it says, just for you for Marilyn or Morris. But I do that with photograph paper, so, you know, I keep myself pretty busy with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I, uh, I occasionally jump in with a question, as long as you're talking about photography uh, as a hobby, let me get you to talk a little bit about how photography's changed over the years. I remember the days when you know you took a picture and you had to wait till you shot off all your pictures <laughs> oh, and send off your film to be developed. Oh, and, you know, months later, you saw what you got uh, compared to today. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yes, I, I, I uh, uh, well, digital now is so much easier to work with. There's a lot of things. I bet you you, you must use that a lot, the photographer. And of course, cameras, cameras. My first camera was a movie camera. You ever hear the name Bolex? It's a C8, and this, I got that in 1951. It had six, six uh, uh, color little sections on the lens. You could flip them around and we put different colors in. Anyway, I, saw, I got, got rid of it two years last year. Nobody, but nobody would buy that. First of all, the clutch wasn't working on it, but anyway, it was too old. You can't even get anything for it. So I hauled it to the, uh, we brought it into the recycle depot <laughs> and just gave it to them. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I hear that you're a secretary, right? Yeah. Secretary, was it really hard uh, learning how to use computers or how was that? It, it wasn't too bad because the computers, when we first got them, they were quite simple, quite you know, compared to what they are now. And uh, it was just mainly the the programs that the schools had that you had to to learn oh. and that. But uh, in a way, it, was, it made uh, work a lot easier because you could put all the school records and things on there and you weren't having to write it, you know, the register. You just have to write all the down, but then it all went onto the computer. Tell so them. It was tell, easier. tell them when you started when you used to use shorthand. I mean, oh, he doesn't yeah. know what that is even. Yeah, instead of uh, like when you want a letter typed, a, you know, the secretary would take it down in shorthand. Do you ever hear of that? No, I no, don't. It no. was called Pittman shorthand, oh, so and I learned that in school, grade uh, eleven and twelve. And then that's what you had to have to qualify for a secretary job. Oh. And then you had to have so many minutes on typing on a, a manual typewriter. Oh, okay. You know, and uh, 60 minutes, I think it was. And then we got the electric typewriter finally. And then we went to the computers, so. Oh. Yeah, it was, uh, it was quite a change. And after the computers come in, I thought, oh, that's it. I'm retiring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her boss at school, her, the principal, whenever she'd take a letter, he'd just tell her, just talk to her, tell her. Shorthand, she wrote it down, and then she'd have to go back over it. And yeah. Shorthand, can you imagine? Yeah. 
You but it's funny, that? you know, the, you can still remember, because I did it for a few years, but you can still remember all your different signs and all that with it. it sticks with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Did you have any pets growing up? Yeah, we had cats and dogs and birds. Oh, yeah. okay. For a long time, or? Yeah, pretty well all, all our life we always had some animals. We had a dog, I guess we had it for about 10, 12 years. And then one day it wasn't, it wasn't, didn't, wasn't, didn't come in again. And two or three days later we thought, well, when an animal gets older, I hear that sometimes, quite often what they'll do, they'll take off and go in the bush someplace and they know they're dying. And that's what they'll do. They'll just go to the bush and lay down and that's it. But we did have a dog, we used to have cats. We had canaries, of course. When I was in California, I used to run, raise budgies. We had 500 of them at our place. We never had, we never had a pet. Well, you, when you raise that many, you got to. And then I used to go and I used to tear down old, old farm buildings to get the aluminum and the wood out of them. And then I'd build them because we were on a, an acre of land, and I'd build cages and wire around them and everything so then you get your birds together and then, a, then after a while when they start having you have to build a nest nests and you have to hang their feet up so the mice or rat won't get them and all that stuff and of course the wife when when they're born they're after they're a certain age they're still babies you have to band them because if they get older you can't get that band over their their toes so to speak and of course, my wife used to get bitten with that. It's from that but. but anyway, those are things you don't do anymore today. That doesn't. We used to have fun with that. We never made money with that. I belonged to the to the the club, and I was a secretary for a while. And we I used to live in Riverside, California, and we'd go to Los Angeles. We'd go to San Diego, San Diego and go to Northern California for different shows and different. Oh yeah, yes. I had my own kind of birds, and she had her own. I, I had I had show birds actually. Anyway, those things don't happen today. You just Not anymore. It's a bigger concern to do that or whatever. Okay. Uh, are there any special items or photos that uh, came down from your family uh, that have been passed down at all? I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of. I know we've got lots of photos, photos of the families, and uh, I can't think of. Uh, yeah. Well, I know I have my mom and dad's dining room suite. That's about all that was passed down. Oh, okay. You know, they didn't have a lot of uh, stuff. You know, like to give to different people, just ordinary stuff. But I, uh, but we've all, all got lots of pictures that's and everything. Sure. Yeah, that's the main thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When they lived, when they, where you were, just a little girl, just by the Lougheed Mall there somewhere. Or, what, what's the name of that? Uh, what's the name of that road that comes down and then you were here? You were born oh, there. Oh yeah, the Whiting Way. That was named after my dad. Oh, really? It's a, it's a street just before North Road and Austin, and it's called Whiting Way, oh. and that was my uh, parent, my, my maiden name was Whiting. Oh. How come the street was named after your father? Uh, well, my grandfather had been in the council, and my dad was, uh, he was one of the older people when they had their 100th anniversary, he was recognized. So I guess that's why they they mm -hmm. put uh, put waiting waiting oh. way. Yeah. Okay. Well, there was not there was a lot of bush around there, and then too. Yeah. Well, we lived right there too. Yes. Right. At there was no malls there's, or whatever. There's an empty lot there, just on Austin, and uh, just before you get to North Road. And our first the first house I lived in was there, but there's nothing there now. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And then my grandparents had. Uh, uh, greenhouses on uh, 
uh, Rochester. The house that my dad was born in is still there. It's but still the greenhouses aren't. Yeah, the house is still there. Oh. And uh, it was uh, it was ironic because we used to go visit my grandparents, and they had people coming in to look after the greenhouses, you know, because to keep them warm and the winter because the flowers and all that. And lo and behold, it was uh, he was coming in and looking after it because he came and saw us as kids. I guess I was kids. about three at the time. Yeah, and he three came year in old then, yeah. <laughs> with ringlets of that. You would yeah. you could never and look ahead and figure what would happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, kind of. But the house is still there and it's still, you know, they're still living it. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if I may interject uh, for our future viewers, this is the voice of uh, Doug Rowling, the coordinator of the oral history program. And uh, I'm curious. Uh, you, you're, it was. Did I hear you correctly? It was your father's house that you're just speaking of. Well, he was born in well, on was Rochester. Born in, yeah. And it's on Rochester. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to pin down the location. Do you know the cross street? Can you think of it? Uh, I used to know the address too. No, um, that's okay. Going down uh, Rochester to uh, North Road, yeah. um, it's about three quarters and it's on the right hand side and it's an older home. I think it's blue and white, mm -hmm. but there's mostly all big new homes in there. It, it's a smaller, it's a it's past, a smaller home. Down past uh, Colby or something. I don't, I don't remember yeah, I those streets. I can't remember yeah. those names. Yeah, that's okay. But it's, it is. It's blue and white. And I it's think it's. Smaller than, I think it's still blue and white. Yeah. Than the, the homes around it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they might have some of the history of that. Down, you know, downstairs at the back, uh, with that That's stuff right. he's got downstairs. Yeah. They were going to remember that fellow that bought it. I can't and, remember uh, the name. Yeah, and they wanted to, to uh, have it as a heritage house. So I don't know if anything ever. Then the fellow he ended up with cancer and he passed away. Uh -huh. So I don't know if anything else has. Do you have any recollection or inkling uh, as to when it was built? Well, my, I got a paper, my dad was born in 1911 and it was built before that because grandma and grandpa lived in it. So it was before if, 19, so it's time. over 100 years old. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you die, drive west on, on Rochester and you go, it's about halfway down, maybe a little bit more. But you can't hardly miss the house because they're all new houses there now. This is a smaller home. You 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 can just remember the, what the era might look like. So yeah. it might give you a better chance of identifying it. Yeah, those who are interested, they can track that down. Yeah. Sure. Have you ever uh, been into a Burnaby uh, Heritage Place? Not lately. No. Okay, because uh, there is a house in there. It's called the Love Farmhouse. That was my my grandfather on my on, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> on my uh, dad's side too. Yeah, yeah. So, so and they, they moved that house from New Westminster from McBride and Fifteenth or something. Yeah, and they moved it to Heritage Place. So. And and that spot yeah. you can find that out fairly easy. It's near. It's quite a ways up around Fifteenth, but it's on the west side, the sidewalk goes up. This big old oak tree or whatever it was is in the middle of the sidewalk. Because when they moved the house away, the city decided that that tree should stay there. Yeah, that was planted so by my grandpa, and so, so they just. It's in the middle the of the sidewalk. You have to walk around it. Yeah. But the house is in at the Burnaby Heart. Burnaby. Yeah, they moved it there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're you're truly a pioneer, and certainly a daughter of of pioneers <laughs> for for Coquitlam because uh, you know that uh, that house comes from a time when people got up at four o'clock in the morning to stoke the stove. Oh, yeah. The light mm -hmm. came from candlelight and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, anyway, I've talked too much. Uh, over to you, Wesley. While living in uh, Fraser Mill and Coquitlam, has there been any major events that's changed things at all? The first, the first strike for Fraser Mills 
I don't remember what year that was. I must have been about three or four years old. It was the first strike that they had there. In our house, there was electric tree cars used to come out through the bush. In our houses there were Toys R Us's. That's where our house was. When the low heat highway comes through, Dad got a chance to buy it and moved it up to Marma or Blue Mountain and, and Alderson. But anyway, that particular strike, they had RC, not RC, mounted police, horse on horses. The municipal hall was right here, and that's where the, the horses and the police were and the people, and they were striking down there. So there's pictures of all that in that, the archives down in here, of all that stuff. We have some too. But you know, you're, look, you're looking for history of the area. Both my grandfather and, grand, and, and grandmother, both, fa both sides of the family came here from Quebec in 1911 something. And then, because they were looking for somebody to work at the mill, they told them they'd give them a piece of property. They would supply the wood for them to build a house. And I think they were paying, I, I think, $10 a month seems like quite a bit, but they weren't paying too much. It took a long time to pay off the wood. But there's a lot of these pioneers, that's the way they were, or that's how they got started here, that particular way. So, you know, you get a piece of property, you build a house. There's not too many of those left anymore. They've, they weren't carpenters or anything in those days. They were, you know, oh yeah, that's, there's, a lot of changes. What else? Do you think of anything that? Well, yeah. coordinator, if I may, and just jump in. I believe the strike was in 1932. Yeah. And, okay. And uh, I was four years old. Yeah, and it, as as you uh, have described, uh, things got pretty rough, you know, from both sides. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for the reference of our future viewers. The strike is well covered in a book called the Coquitlam 100 book. Yes. And a, a more recent book, an updated history of Coquitlam called Coquitlam Then and Now, which is available at Coquitlam Libraries. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's, you know, this history of these, this house here and the one across here, where the Plastic Arts is, those were Fraser Mill homes. But they were the, the, the managers and the big, 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 you know, from the mill that lived here, not the regular people. It was always the managers from Fraser Mills that lived in these two houses. One started over there and then he come over here. I don't know what happened to the other one, if he passed away or what. And if, if you're looking for any kind of history, the daughters of one of these, I don't know if, I th if it's Mackin, the daughter is still alive, actually. Granddaughter. Granddaughter? Yeah, granddaughter, excuse granddaughter. me. Yeah. Granddaughter. I don't know her name or anything, but when we belonged to the to this organization here for the Mackin House, they had uh, uh, they got they got we used to go in to try to get all that history. Well they found out about this girl and they, they got her over here and and she told them, you know, about this and that. That almost brings us up to today, doesn't it? Yeah, just a little. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, growing up, I understand there were no TVs, computers, or anything. So, to, for fun, you guys would just play outside and. Well, we play outside, or else you, well, play a lot of cribbage with dad. Kids played cribbage. I don't know what these people do, what they did. Yeah. When they bought that house, when their father bought that house up here on Marmont, there was no bathroom in the house. It was the outhouses. <laughs> Three rooms. And, and there was, uh, when they Seven moved there, kids. there was six kids and two adults. <laughs> yeah. But uh, they, uh, we used to play games, you know, more games than what the kids do now. You'd gather around the table and, you know, just... We used have to have fun playing, or go outside, play kick the can and things like that, but you know, they just don't do things like that anymore. Yeah, <laughs> we used to gather the kids our own ages, and you, did, you had a baseball bat, but you made it out of a limb. <laughs> and just get together and play kind of baseball, kind of, yeah. kind of. 
scrub yeah. ball. So we used to, you know, go in the bush and make it, cut down trees and make a little log cabin and oh, geez, all kinds of stuff, needy. Yeah, well, the parents on our street, we had over <coughs> four kids. And we'd get together every once in a while with the parents and the kids and then go up to the school ground and we'd have a big baseball game and, you know, get set. That was, that was fun because, you know, it was something you can always remember. Oh. Yeah. And I heard previously that uh, you, you lived near Lougheed Mall before? When I was first born. First born? Yeah, it's oh. just this side of on okay. Marmont, uh, Austin and North Road. And it's the same Lougheed Mall that's here right now, right? Yeah, that didn't come yeah, in. Yeah, that wasn't in there. For, that was, no, there was nothing oh. there. Oh, yeah. and then it was built later? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. quite a bit later. Yeah, there was nothing. North Road was, even that bridge, when my dad was here, here, they they didn't have the you know the bridge that crosses the railway. Well, that wasn't there. They had to. My dad always says he had to, you know, uh, get the papers, and so he walked or took his bike from Rochester all the way into uh, Sapperton, picked up his newspapers, and then he pedaled his bike back. And, and then no he bridge did it down, so they just they had to go down kind of. So a that, that's back quite a you know because there was no buses or anything and. Nobody to bring the papers out and all that. So, yeah. um, it's quite quite different because that was just like a little cow trail. North Road was, uh, that, you know, well, that's a hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah. But they used to the families there. She was telling me I wasn't part of that. They used to get together on Saturday nights and have parties at the different houses. And over after after midnight or something, the guys were getting you know fairly fairly tight. They get quite a bit of drinking. So one guy would take off and go to the different houses and look into the to the kitchens and get eggs and bacon <laughs> and then bring it back to that house and they'd have breakfast in the morning. <laughs> no houses were locked or anything. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, they were but we were all really great friends, so that's why. So many things. Yeah. Well, I don't remember what year it was, but when da after dad and mother moved here, up up to, up to I uh, would move their house in that. Later on, though, after that, I went up to Blue Mountain Park, and I picked out a tree that would make a, a clothesline pole for him. I kid you not, I tied that thing off to my car and drug it down Marmont all the way down to his house. <laughs> I would have got <laughs> thrown in jail for stuff like that today. You know, yeah. and then of course you dig the hole. You make it. Then that was up there for a long time. Yeah, there's a lot. We got a lot of history. Oh, we do quite a bit, both of us, anyway. Mm -hmm. My former wife and I used to own property in in uh, Boundary Bay, not Boundary Bay. It's not Steveston. By White Rock, this side of White Rock. Beach Grove. Uh, no, no. But anyway. Well, we bought it. We even bought a. We bought a lot there. And what did we? Yeah. But anyway, on that particular lot, little tree like this, growing. So we owned the lot. Took the tree out, brought it up to Dad's, and he put it there on the corner of where his property was. That stump is that big today, and of course they cut it down. It's just about level to the ground. But you know, you think. Think back of that stuff. There's a lot, a lot of that stuff that you think of in those days. You would never do that today. Never. That doesn't happen. Can you imagine without a computer? You're the young guy. What they're doing with cameras? What you know, it's only been 25 years ago. They didn't have that. wasn't going. Maybe a little bit more than that back. But I can remember when we. I was down in California. The guy's trying to explain how. Computers were going to work. That must have been 1963 or four or something. And he's trying to explain how to because it had no knowledge of them. And it would take about two houses to to make a station. It was so much stuff. Today, you know what happens with digital? It's, you get you get so much out of them, and you don't have any space at all with them. No. <laughs> Well, when we moved from here six, seven years ago, we moved to Maple Ridge because that house we had up here was like three stories. 
uh, in, in the basement, which was really only six foot high, and it was just a dugout section. The freezer for the house was down there, a big, big 20 foot, 21 foot freezer. And the washing machine got down there, and so did the dryer got down there. And the workshop, my workshop was down there. I mean, up and down and in besides, there's a certain, when you're, if you're a carpenter, you know that a step has to be so much from here to there, and have to drop so much. If you don't follow that, you don't walk down the stairway naturally. You know, instead of 10 inches, you go eight inches and then you, you drop down a foot instead of uh, whatever it is, I can't remember now. So that's the reason why we got out of that place and that was an old place. In Maple Ridge, we're two bedroom house now and it's a rancher and the park is in our backyard, so we like it there. But we're still connected here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Were you trying to say something, or? I I can't think of anything else. We're at five minutes left. If you have a last oh, question okay. here. Okay. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. Can you basically just describe what are like the main changes of now and then, like? Oh. Yeah. Well, there's uh, the the. Uh, Austin Heights area, it has grown quite a bit, and now I can see it's growing a lot more because they're putting in all high rises and everything up in Austin. What do you think of the high rises? Do you think I, I don't? I wouldn't. I wouldn't want them. No, no. It's going to ruin the the area. I think. Yeah, it will. But uh, like Safeway's been there for for quite a while now, and but I guess it'll be moving too. But but the, I know when, when we were there, all the, the big problem was there was no parking for people on Austin, you know, to go shopping, you know, for the stores and all that. And that was their main concern because they wanted more parking and at times they wanted to take the lots on Charlotte and make parking lots out of it and trying everything to keep the people to shop in their area. And now they're, I guess, they're going to do, I guess it's only the main, the top area where they're putting all these high rises. Yeah. Yeah. But the lower side, I don't know what they're going to do for parking because there's just no parking. Yeah. Marilyn and I, yeah. what I, that wasn't, when Lowheed Mall, do you ever, not Lowheed, Crooklyn Center, do you remember when they started building that? Okay, there was all bush there at one time, then they cleared a lot of it. And then we used to, I had, I had a pickup truck. I loaded the two bikes. My sister-in-law and brother lived in Coquit Park Coquilla. We load the bikes up on there and we go down there and ride our bikes around that area and around where the, there was only, they just cleared the land. And I even worked there, worked on that mall too for two years. Yeah, anyway, that's that's the big change. Is yeah. You worked construction for the Coquitlam Mall? Yeah. Well, yeah, I did in Coquitlam, but I did in California also. Uh, I was in construction for about 40 years or something, 38, 38 40 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, th those were just the main changes. When the Lowheed, uh, Pardon? Lowheed Highway, mm -hmm. when was that put in place? Oh, I don't, I think I had left here for a few years. I was on Prince George. Uh, Probably in the late 50s, early 60s, somewhere on there. And was it? I think so. Must have been yeah. early 60s, because yeah. I, was, I was in Prince George until 60, and then I moved to California, and I wasn't in then. Portman Bridge wasn't even started. That's right. That stuff. Yeah.